Best of luck that. Now, spring is well underway and people are spending more time in the great outdoors in their gardens, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, this weekend was so nice. And while the gardens are a place sanctuary for the green finger amongst us, it's where the great battles are fought every day as we strive to protect the precious plants while a multitude of garden pests seek to destroy them. Oh, I love the way you did that. <laughs> so good. I was in. Well, I wanted to sell I'm it for David. You sold it. Well, listen, David Don Dominley is here with his top tips uh, to take on those sneaky garden beasties. Good morning, Hi, David. David. Good morning to you. I love this time of year. Out of the greenhouse, my first crops are ready. Look at these lettuces, so easy to grow. If you've ever fancied growing lettuce yourself, this is a, an old pot that I bought a plant in. I've saved that, put some peat-free compost in. I just sprinkle a few seeds over the top. These are little salad seeds, they're lettuce mix. I get a flush of colour. I crop those, they come again, and then what's ever left in the seed, I take them and just do a fresh sprinkling over the top. I mean, growing plants by seed, is fantastic and look at the tasty energy of these leaves. Unfortunately, as you mentioned earlier, with the warmth and the wet, there's a few other creatures that are quite partial to some of the crops that I've got. This isn't real, by the way, it is just a toy, but it signifies those lovely little molecules that come in from the, uh, uh, from the garden to be able to, to eat some of the crops. And there are different things that you can do without using chemicals in the garden. These are organic ways to protect your plants. And with slugs, there's a couple of things you can do. The first thing with slugs, just to give you an idea, is don't use your water last thing at night. If you, They prefer a very damp area. The biggest enemy to slugs is the sunlight and drying out. So uh, they come out at night and if you've got a, an area that you've watered that's still damp, that's where they move. So never water late enough for the sun not to have chance to dry it up afterwards is my first big tip. Now there are barriers that you can put around your plants that slugs don't like climbing over. Coffee grounds, many old gardeners prefer the, the trick of that, it dehydrates the slug and makes it awkward. Or there's wood wool pellets as well, you know what it's like with a nitty jumper, slugs don't like that either. Or you've got uh, things like sharp gravel that you can put down, or even copper tape. You can put copper tape around your... Oh, look, there's a little bee from my hives. I've got my beehives just over the far side. They're all active at the moment, bringing back... They like dandelions at this time of year, the bees, so try and leave a few dandelions out early on in the season. But if you put copper tape around the containers, the slugs don't like crawling over, but make sure you check your container first that it hasn't got a slug in, otherwise you're locking them in. You can use beer traps. You can buy these from... Uh, garden centres like this, or you can just use a, a coffee cup from the coffee shop. I bury them in the ground so there's at least about an inch or a bit more above the ground to stop little beetles falling in by mistake. The slugs will crawl over and then just put some beer at the bottom. It's almost like a dinner bell for the slugs as they come in and then you can humanely remove them. Of course, things like insects like carrot fly and, and aphids and the like, they're not very good, but again, I don't like using insecticides in the garden. I'd rather do a deterrent. Now, you can use, if you've got really infected plants, you won't have them just as yet, but later on, as the, as the season starts to warm up, things like green fly, you can use a little bit of washing up liquid, say a, a teaspoonful of washing up liquid into three litres of water, that's roughly the measurement, and then spray the infected plants just where the green fly are. Try not to get it on any other insects and that will help control those. Or you can make up your own. Garlic's really good to mix up into, uh, into a liquid of water and the smell of the garlic is a repellent to a lot of insects. If you've got a very big infested area of green fly, you can mix in some chilli powder to make your own natural uh, uh, deterrent or green fly uh, uh, remover. Uh, and there's many of those different types of concoction on the website, but the secret is, is not to spray where you've got any of the beneficial insects around. Just concentrate them on the build-up of the green fly themselves. But of course, Plants also help with, uh, with insects and getting rid of them. Things like, uh, things like cat mint here is a really good natural repellent. If you put that in your borders, that dissuades some of the insects about. Likewise, lavender. You see, the, the bees will come for the flowers, OK, but the fragrance and the strong fragrance of the lavender is often a deterrent. Same with thyme. 
Look at that, I love thyme. Hey, look, here's some of my baby thyme. The seeds are just germinating now. So much fun to grow. And of course, if you're planting things, there's a great thing, it's called companion planting, look it up. So if you're planting carrots, plant in with leeks and the leeks will deter the carrot fly as well. So companion planting is very important. The things like sage and lemon balm and mints and garlic and even ornamental onions like the alliums are pretty good deterrents. Now, there's a couple of other things you can do is using nature towards you. This is a waspinator. It is a, a little bag and the patination on the side looks exactly like a wasp's nest. And what happens is wasps come in, see this nest, think it's a rival wasp and they fly away because I don't like being stung by wasps. You don't like being stung by wasps. Wasps don't like being stung by wasps. So they keep away. And again, you're not using chemicals. And here is creating little bug huts that attract beneficial insects like lacewings. Here's a little lady. Oh, here's one that my kids did. Look at that. They made a little stone out <laughs> into a ladybird. And uh, you can also do little pots. Just put little bits of straw in. So these beneficial insects, I mean, a ladybird can eat 5,000 green fly in a day. As you can see, I've even got them on the tops of my uh, poles there, just ready for my peas and my beans. So by attracting birds and making little uh, habitats for things like uh, ladybirds and lacewings, they will naturally be the garden's bouncer and protect your plants. So there's a whole host of ways of taking care of your plants and protecting them without the use of any pesticides. It's all very natural. Nature's bouncer. Oh. I love that. The Your garden, garden is just so everything. I can't stop looking at it. So it's incredible. Lovely. Thank you so Thanks, much, David. David. Now, listen, if you would like uh, David uh, to work his magic on your garden, then take a look at this. I think you might like it. Hello. This is a message for all sad, overgrown front gardens. Are you feeling neglected? Do you need some TLC from garden guru David Dominey? Leslie's garden did until David and his merry band of helpers transformed it from this to this. Wow. So if you'd like to be in with a chance of getting a front garden facelift and you're 18 plus, go to the app and tap Get Involved. You'll need to upload photographs or a video and tell us why it needs a facelift. And remember, include your address. And who knows, I could be popping round to give your front garden a facelift. Imagine if that happened that to you. That would be so, so good. Oh, listen, after the break, we're going to be tucking it.